Story recapped here. Today, I'm going to explain a horror and thriller film called Wrong Turn. Spoilers ahead. Watch out and take care. In the West Virginian Appalachian wilderness, a couple climbs deep within the forest. The man reaches the top while his girlfriend struggles. She loses footing, but luckily she's on a harness. She asks her boyfriend to pull her up, but he doesn't respond. Suddenly, the man lays lifeless by the edge. His killer throws him over the edge and starts pulling the woman's harness. She uses a knife to cut her harness, but she loses balance and falls beside her dead boyfriend. The killer chases her down, and she runs for her life. With her car in sight, she trips on barbed wire. The killer then pulls her and kills her. News about the couple's death spreads throughout the county, reaching Chris. Car radio as he drives along. He encounters unexpected traffic. Chris exits the vehicle to ask a trucker what's happening. The trucker says a truck spilled chemicals on the road, and it'll take hours until it's cleaned up. Chris starts up his car and turns back. He tries to call someone to inform them that he'll be late for his job interview, but he has no reception. On his way, Chris sees a sign and takes a detour. He arrives at a gas station. Chris uses the payphone, but it doesn't work. He asks the owner if he has another phone, but he refuses to lend it to him. So Chris looks at the map, and he finds a marked off path. As he leaves, the owner wishes him good luck with the journey, seeming like he foresees grim events about to occur. On the path, Chris encounters a crossroads. He sees a sign that says Bear Mountain Road. He thinks for a while and continues to drive down that path. Suddenly, his stereo acts up, the CD ejects, and Chris reaches for it. He puts it back, and he regains control. However, he gets distracted by his dashing looks in the rearview mirror and crashes into another vehicle. As Chris exits his car, Scott and Carly approach him to make sure he's okay. Evan starts berating him for driving recklessly, and Francine asks him to pay for the damage done to her mother's car. The group explains that they blew a tire, which is why they're stuck in the middle of the road. Jesse informs the group that she found a barbed wire that punctured their tires. They plan to look for someone that can help them. Jesse converses with Chris and asks him to carry her bag. Scott apologizes as he feels terrible for the way his friends treat Chris. The four of them leave while Evan and Francine stay behind to keep watch. Scott becomes friendly with Chris, asking him if everything was in slow motion when he crashed. Chris just laughs at his silly remarks. After a while, the group encounters a dead animal. Scott thinks it's a squirrel, but Chris corrects him, saying it's a mink. Humble bragging the fact that he went to medical school. Evan and Francine contemplate how they should have taken Jesse to New York instead of the woods. Francine says that Jesse loves the woods, and as her friends, they should help her get through her recent breakup. The conversation leads to Francine sliding down and asking Evan to remove his pants. She kisses him and plans to up the ante by going down on Evan. Meanwhile, Scott and Carly daydream about their future as a couple. Scott then sees flames beside a tree. Someone started a fire not too long ago, and they call out to the mystery person. However, no one answers, and they go about their way. Evan searches the back of their vehicle to find something to eat, while Francine snacks on a candy bar in Chris's car. She looks through Chris's CDs and judges his taste in music. Suddenly, a faint noise of a branch breaking sparks Evan's curiosity, and he leaves to check it out. Feeling worried, Francine walks deeper into the forest to search for him. On the ground, she sees his shoe. Concurrently, Scott and Carly are planning their future wedding. He acts more of a bride than her as he chooses their wedding singer. As time passes, Scott gets lost in his thoughts. He finally realizes that Carly isn't with him anymore. After more searching, Francine sees Evan's ear on the ground. She steps back in fear and disgust, unknowingly walking to her death. Scott is starting to feel more anxious as Carly is still nowhere to be found. She then appears, scaring Scott. The two then catch up with Chris and Jesse standing at the edge of a cliff. Scott pretends to trip, almost going over the edge. Chris and Jesse leave the two as Carly starts talking about their future sensual escapades. The couples arrive at a cabin in the woods. They find it odd that several abandoned vehicles surround the home. Chris knocks on the cabin, but no one answers. They decide to enter the shack. They rummage through all the filth to try and find a phone, but to no avail. Scott urges them to leave the place as he suspects that the homeowner belongs to a cult, but Carly shouts at him to shut up. Scott then opens a room filled with random items. Jesse also finds an odd collection of sunglasses. Meanwhile, Chris finds a pot filled with boiling dark liquid. Chris enters another room that has a working generator powering up refrigerators and coolers. 
He opens it up to find jars filled with body parts. Simultaneously, Jesse finds barbed wire covered up in a corner, Chris opens up a container with human flesh, and Carly sees a dead body submerged in the bathtub. They're about to leave when suddenly, a pickup truck arrives with their vehicles in tow. They try to exit through the back door, but it's barricaded. The mutants enter their home while Jesse and Scott hide under a bed. One of the mutants drops Francine's body, and the two see her mangled face. Her blood flows through Chris's hand, and they shake in fear and disgust. The mutants with deformed faces then start cutting up Francine. A bullet drops under the bed, and a mutant reaches for it, luckily missing the two under the bed. Behind a keyhole, Carly whimpers at the sight of them butchering her friend. After some time, the mutants take a deserved nap after a long day of killing. The two couples start to make their way out of the cabin. Carly knocks down a pitcher, making noise, but the mutants stay sleeping. She can't bear to look at Francine's chopped up body. They near the exit, and as Jesse opens the door, Chris holds onto the door spring to stop it from making a sound. His hands start to bleed as everyone takes their time leaving. Due to this, one of the mutants awakens and sees them leaving. They start running up the mountain, and behind them are the brothers riding off for another hunt. Carly is in distress, slowing down the group. Scott comforts her by talking about their future, and she calms down. They arrive in an area filled with abandoned vehicles and remnants of murders. In the distance, Chris hears the pickup truck closing in. They get down to avoid being seen, and the deformed brothers start to search for their prey. Chris plans to use the pickup truck to escape. Scott suggests one of them distracts the mutants while the others get into the vehicle. Without hesitating, Chris starts running and shouting. One of the mutants shoots Chris in the calf, disabling him. To try and save him, Scott also runs to distract them. Jesse and Carly help Chris to the truck. Upon opening the door, Evan rolls out, and Carly gets emotional once more. They drive off, but right behind them is one of the brothers. Deeper in the woods, they spot Scott. He runs towards them, but he suddenly stops moving. An arrow pierces his chest, killing him. Another arrow shatters the glass, prompting Jesse to drive, leaving Scott behind. In the truck, Carly can't accept her fiancé's death and then begs Jesse to turn back. After a few hours of driving, they return to the path. Without the love of her life, Carly's eyes are lifeless. Unfortunately, the truck gets stuck in the mud, so they abandon it. Carly refuses to believe they can survive and loses all hope. Jesse tries to tell her that Scott sacrificed himself so they could survive. She eventually listens, and they continue their journey. Chris cuts it close as he almost gets caught in a bear trap. Carly then maniacally laughs at what happened. The group comes across a watchtower. Carly starts shouting to see if someone is up there, and Jesse asks her to be quiet. They climb up the rickety ladder, and they reach the top just in time for sunset. Chris and Jesse start to look for nearby roads or towns while Carly remains pessimistic. They find a first aid kit, and Jesse helps in fixing up Chris's leg. Carly finds a radio, but no one responds to their distress call. Outside, a faint light from a torch signals Chris that the mutants are close. The mutants pass by them, but a blaring alarm from the radio catches their attention. A ranger receives their distress call and asks for their location. Carly shouts that she doesn't know where they are. The mutants start climbing up the ladder, and Chris starts to barricade the entrance. Jesse gives them a general idea of their whereabouts. The radio base advises them to stay put as he'll come to rescue them. One mutant starts poking through the hatch, and Chris starts crushing it. Suddenly, they stop trying to enter, and it becomes eerily silent. As smoke rises outside, they realize that the watchtower is on fire. Carly throws a crate through the window and plans to jump, saying she'd rather die from the impact than burn to death. Chris realizes that Carly is right, saying there's a possibility to survive the fall. He jumps, and the branches catch him. Carly and Jesse successfully follow, but the mutants hear their screams. They start walking through the trees, hiding within the shadows. Random arrows fire up from below, making them wary of their every move. One of the mutants comes face to face with Carly, and he buries an axe in her face. Chris and Jesse watch as her body separates from her head. They continue to escape, and the laughs and wails of the mutants echo throughout the forest. Chris stops to pull on a branch that he intends to use to push off the mutant in the trees. Jesse leaves to lure the mutant. The mutant drops behind her with a knife in hand. Chris lets go of the branch and the mutant flies off. Chris and Jesse hide behind a waterfall. Jesse opens up about her breakup, saying it was her fault that her friends died. Chris comforts her as they spend the night in each other's embrace. Jesse dreams about the mutants attacking her. She wakes up, startling Chris. They leave the waterfall to carry on with their escape. 
The first sign of hope appears as they see a road. But then, an axe hurls toward Chris, and the mutants surround them. They push Chris off, and they abduct Jesse. A ranger drives down the road, and Chris intercepts him. He reports about the mutants killing them. However, an arrow pierces the rangers eye midway through the conversation. The mutant barely misses the next shot, prompting Chris to hide under the car. The mutant grabs the keys and looks underneath to find no one. Chris hides behind the shrubbery, waiting for the mutant to enter the car. He slides and latches onto the undercarriage. Back in the cabin, Jesse asks the mutant to let her go. Chris and the other mutant arrive, and he watches him drag the ranger to the cabin. He hears Jesse's cries as she watches them butcher the ranger. Suddenly, a fire erupts, and one of the mutants approaches to check on it. Chris rams the front of the house and the mutant with it. He throws a Molotov at the last mutant, lighting him on fire. He stabs him, and the burning mutant falls to the ground. As soon as Chris frees Jesse, another mutant throws him to the wall, grabs an axe, and starts attacking him. The mutant strangles Chris, allowing Jesse to shoot him in the back of the head with an arrow. As they think the horror has ended, the last mutant rushes towards Chris. Jesse hits him from behind with a burning piece of wood. The mutant focuses on her with two knives in hand, kicking her through the glass. Chris then strangles him with a chain, and Jesse deals the final blow with an axe. The three are still alive, and with only a single shot, Chris shoots a fuel tank and the cabin explodes. After a while, the mutant's pickup truck approaches the gas station, and the owner closes up in fear. To his surprise, a beaten up Chris steps out of the vehicle to grab a map. Chris and Jesse survive, and they drive off for Chris's job interview. Inbred, serial killing, and cannibal brothers reside within the forest somewhere in West Virginia. For years, they've gruesomely murdered passing tourists that simply want to immerse themselves with nature for vacation. Unaware that they'll soon be immersed in a pool of their own blood. A group of young adults encounter the mutants and experience the same horrors as those before them. However, with skill, luck, and plot armor on their side, Chris and Jesse barely survive. Ridding the world of murderers, and creating a special relationship built on the foundations of trauma. After a harrowing encounter with hillbilly inbred cannibalistic mutants deep in the woods, Chris and Jesse make it out alive. With their friends all fallen victim to the killers, Chris and Jesse have a newfound respect for life and have formed a stronger bond through a shared traumatic experience. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications. And leave a like it really helps the channel out. Thank you for watching.